Welcome back to Kotlin at Lightspeed. This is Daniel, and in this part, we're going to talk about the essentials of functional programming in Kotlin. I'm not going to waste any time, but I'm going to go straight to the project that we made over the past couple of videos. So if you haven't done so already, I recommend that you check out the previous parts because we build upon the concepts that we learned in the past parts. So here under the com rock the JVM package that I made in the Kotlin at Lightspeed project, I'm going to create a separate application for this part. I'm going to call this FP for functional programming. This is an object. You know what an object is from the object-oriented programming part. And I'm going to type in a main so that this FP object becomes a standalone Kotlin application that we can run independently and test whatever we write in this little part. Okay, so what is functional programming? Well, Kotlin is a powerful programming language and it's a multi-paradigm language, meaning that you can style your code in different ways of thinking in the same language. And functional programming is a different style of thinking. Functional programming involves the ability to use functions as values. That is, for example, if you define an integer like 42, this is a regular value that you can pass as argument, you can change it and so on and so forth. Functions are also values in Kotlin. So let me show you how you can make one. So let me create a function that is going to take an argument as an integer and multiplies that argument by 10, let's say. Right now, the uh, creation of functions in Kotlin was done with the keyword fun. So fun, let's call this multiply, multiply 10 taken an argument as an int and this returns an int and let's assume that this thing is a single argument function that simply returns arg times 10. So this is how we could create functions in Kotlin. Now, functions created with the keyword fun are actually methods of the class or object where we define that particular function. Now, this multiply 10 is not a function value in the sense that we can simply use it like just like any other value. Rather, if I want to create such a function, I'm going to create a val, I'm going to call this 10x fun as, and I'm going to use the fun, following syntax, fun, taking an argument x as an integer, returning an integer, and with curly braces, I'm going to say return x times 10. So this is a very similar function definition, only that this 10x fun is a value. So I can pass it around and return uh, things of this shape as results. In particular, the type of 10x fun is int arrow int. This is a new type that we haven't seen before in this uh, mini course. And this is a function type, a function type taking an int as an argument and returning an int as a result. Now, function values, just like methods that we define with the keyword fun, can be invoked. For example, if I print line 10x fun apply to or invoked on the number 13, let's say, I can invoke it just like any other method. So this is the number 130 that uh, we're going to see in the console if we run this application. But the very important part is that this 10x fun can be passed as an argument. I'm going to show you some examples of where it's useful to pass functions as arguments. I'm going to stress on the syntax for now. So I'm going to show you equivalent ways of defining function values. I'm going to say 10x fun version 2, which has a less involved syntax because this has a lot of moving parts here. And I'm going to have the type of this variable over here, int error int. And on the right hand side, I'm going to simply open some curly braces. And rather than saying fun x colon int colon int, which is the entire function definition, I'm going to simply say x colon int arrow x times 10, which is a shorter definition. This is the most popular definition of function values in Kotlin, also known as a lambda. Lambda comes from the old computer science term lambda calculus, which is the formal mathematical definition of functional programming, which is far more involved than just the ability to use functions as values. So this description is a bit of oversimplification, but this is the most important feature that we're going to use, at least in this part. So you can define function values in Kotlin, also known as lambdas, with this sort of syntax. And because Kotlin's compiler has type inference, because I've defined the type of the argument and also the compiler can infer the type of the result, I can actually omit this type and the Kotlin compiler can figure out the type of this little thing as int error int. So the Kotlin compiler is quite able to figure out the types of your function values. You can also define multi-argument lambdas, so multi-arg lambdas, as let's call this adder, adder fun, 
equals and then open some curly braces. And I'm going to have, instead of one argument, I'm going to separate two arguments separated by comma. So a int b int arrow a plus b. And this is an equivalent lambda that takes two arguments. And obviously if I print it out, for example, add or fun on the numbers 10 and 45, we're gonna see the number 55 being printed to the console. So this is a function value that takes two arguments, also known as a two argument lambda. So you can define lambdas with as many arguments as you like, and the structure looks something like this. Now, why are functions useful? Let me show you some examples with collections. I promised in one of the earlier parts that I'm gonna show you collections functional API. So for example, let me define a val, let's call this numbers as a list of one, two, three, four. Now, this is just a very simple toy example that I can write here off the top of my head, but this list can actually contain millions of numbers or millions of rows in your data structures. And uh, when you're processing data, this can become quite large. Let's assume that somebody gives you this list of integers. Now, a nice transformation on lists is what is called map. Map allows you to transform a list for example, a list of numbers, into something else with an operator that you can apply to every single element in turn. This is where the ability to use a function as a value becomes quite useful. So for example, if I want to multiply all these numbers by 10, I'm gonna call this 10x numbers as numbers.map. And if you look at the map signature here, map with curly braces, whenever you look at this list and whenever you see a function that takes a curly brace argument, that's actually taking a function value as argument, transform into something else, the return type R. So let me show you how you can transform these numbers. Let's assume we have four at this moment, but you can have 40 million numbers and you wanna transform all of them. I'm going to pass a lambda x int arrow x times 10, where I can use the 10x fun as argument. So let's say 10x numbers v2, I'm going to define a val 10x numbers as numbers map 10x fun. And this expression is compact and it allows you to read the ability of this code very quickly. So just one line of code tells you that all these numbers are multiplied by 10 because that's what the 10x fun does. And this is very useful, especially in large code bases where you're uh, reading complex logic. It's uh, often the case that you don't really wanna read for loops and while loops and things of that sort because that distracts you from the objective of your business logic. And uh, operators like map allows you to do that quite easily. So the ability to use map on a function transforms the elements with whatever the function does. This is an equivalent way where I'm passing the lambda as an argument explicitly. A syntax sugar for this sort of construct, which is quite popular in Kotlin, would be to say 10x numbers version three. And uh, whenever you use a method where the last argument is a lambda, you can actually cut it out of the parentheses. So I'm gonna say numbers map and then space and then pass your argument. So x int thin arrow x times 10. So this is the preferred syntax. Now, because this sort of transformation is so popular in Kotlin, there is even shorter or even more sugary syntax. I'm gonna show you uh, the way to do that. So I'm gonna say 10x numbers version four as numbers map. And whenever the compiler expects a function that takes an argument of type int in this case, you can actually omit the type of the argument because the compiler can infer that for you. So you can simply say x arrow x times 10. And this is shorthand because the compiler does type inference. Assuming I can spell this properly. So shorthand with the compiler doing type inference. And if the lambda is so short that you're using the argument just once, so you're doing some sort of expression based on the argument that you don't really want to repeat. So x arrow x times 10, just want to say x times 10, whatever x is. The way to do that is to say, let's say 10x numbers version five. And this is the most shorthand syntax that you can ever use with lambdas is to say it times 10 where it is a semi keyword and that is a substitute for the only parameter of this function. So value parameter it is of type int and this is the same as all the versions before. So all these 10x numbers lists are the same. 
So there you have it, the ability to pass a function itself as an argument and the ability to do quick transformations on uh, very complex collections sometimes. Now, this is a toy collection, I admit, but uh, uh, in real life, you may end up with very complex collections. Speaking of which, speaking of collections and transformations, with this capability unlocked, I'm going to show you the functional API or most of the functional API that you are going to use um, in the most popular use cases. For example, filtering is a such a use case. For example, if I have these numbers as having 10 million numbers, I'm only interested in the numbers that satisfy some sort of property. For example, the even numbers. I can say numbers filter, and filter is a function that takes a function as an argument. We call that a higher order function, much like a map. So filter, and I'm going to pass a, what is called a predicate, which is a function value int to Boolean. So for example, I can say x arrow x mod two is equal to zero. And this is the function value that I'm passing to filter. And what I'm gonna get is just the numbers in the original list, which pass these, this predicate for which the function returns true. So this is gonna return a new list with just the even numbers, two and four. And this is solvable with just one line of code rather than doing a for loop with uh, checks and if statements and so on and so forth. Let me show you some other transformations. For example, reducing a list to a single value. For example, if you want to sum up all these numbers, you'd normally you'd run a for loop, initialize a variable, go through all the elements of the list, sum, uh, sum them up. What you can do is to say, we call this number sum, as numbers reduce, and reduce takes a function of two arguments, and uh, this is the accumulator, which is the number to which every item is being added to. So the partial sum and the element. I'm going to return partial sum plus the element. And this is going to return the sum of all elements of the list. In this, in this case, that number sum is 10. And it can actually print it out. So you can pause the video and test whatever I'm writing here. I'm not... Uh, printing everything, but number sum numbers sum seems pretty important. So I'm going to show you. All right, so we have the number 10 here. And reduce is very interesting because in combination with map, you can process various kinds of collections, including parallel collections. And uh, this is why we have the, uh, the paradigm map reduce for distributed computations. This simple framework actually started the big data revolution with uh, frameworks like uh, map reduce and Apache Spark and Scala, for example. So with map and reduce and with functional programming, you can actually achieve some very powerful results. Let me show you some other transformations. For example, processing with predicates. Much like filter. Filter is one of the most popular predicate higher order function. For example, you can uh, find an item in this list such that a predicate holds true rather than just finding the element itself. So let's say first even as numbers find and you'll pass a predicate x arrow x mod two is equal to zero. And this is going to return the first item in the numbers list for which the predicate holds true. And this is gonna return a nullable. We're gonna talk about nullables in the next part. In other words, if no number in the numbers list matches or passes this predicate, then the expression is going to return null, which is why we're gonna have the type here int with a question mark. We're gonna learn how to deal with types with question marks in the next part. You can also take the first items of the list as long as the predicate holds true. For example, if you want to take all the odd numbers in this list, so for example, you have one, three, five, seven, nine, and then an even number like two, three, four. Um, obviously, three is not even, but you get the idea. You can have an even prefix or odd prefix. Odd prefix as numbers take while. And you can pass the same sort of predicate like x, arrow, x mod 2 is not equal to 0. And uh, what this expression does is that it takes the first numbers of this list as long as this predicate holds true. In this case, for the numbers that we have here, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, we're going to return that prefix, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and then the function will stop because at the point when the predicate does not hold true anymore, so for two, this predicate is false, then the expression finishes and you're uh, going to return this list.
So take while is a very interesting transformation. You can also count uh, the numbers in this list or the elements in a collection as long as a predicate holds true. So for example, the count of even numbers, so even numbers count as numbers count, it mod two is equal to zero just to use the shorthand notation. So this is the same as x arrow x mod two is equal to zero. And this will simply take all the items of this list and count just those that will uh, match this predicate. In this case, we have two and four. So we're gonna have just two numbers passing this predicate. And there are many, many, many different kinds of transformers in the functional API. For example, if you want to format this list in a nice human readable way, let me show you a string representation just so that you don't simply transform the numbers list into other kinds of lists. So numbers join to string and join to string is a very interesting function. Join to string takes a bunch of arguments. For example, you'll take the separator, the initial, so separator, the initial token, for example, curly brace, the end token, curly brace. I'm putting the lambda at the end because join to string has many arguments. The last one of which is the lambda that you use to transform every element of the list into a string representation of that. So I'm gonna say x to string, for example. So what this expression does is that it transforms every item to its string representation and then chains all the string representations with this first token at the beginning, the end token at the end, and this separator in between every element. So this string representation is gonna look something very interesting. So string rep. So we're gonna see all these numbers separated by bars. So one, three, five, seven, nine, two, three, four with curly braces uh, at the beginning and at the end. So join to string is a quite powerful transformer that will help you achieve results more quickly. And in general, the functional API and this capability of passing functions as values will help you simply coding quicker. So there you have it, folks, so the basics of functional programming in Kotlin. I hope you found this useful and valuable, and I'm waiting for you in the next part.